Hi, my name is Sherry Shockey Pope, and I am the co-founder and COO of Central Counseling Services in Riverside, California. Joe Muirhead asked me to speak today to you on the pitfalls of private practice. And one of the biggest pitfalls that I see is sometimes we become overzealous in our dreaming of our business. And what I mean by that is we dream of freedom, right? We dream of the days that we're going to work. We dream of how much extra time that we're going to have with our families. We dream of how much money we're going to make, right? Because we're in business to make money. But we don't think about the actual plan. So we think about, okay, I want to earn $150,000. Well, what does that translate into per session hours or per client hours? So if you take $150,000 and you divide it by 48, which would be the number of weeks that we work in the year, you end up with roughly $230 a session. Now, some places that's doable, other places it's not. But we have to plan ahead if that's the amount that you want to make. So there's lots of research that shows if we don't sit down and write a business plan, we don't know where we're going. It's sort of like driving your car and just getting on a road and hoping it goes to the place that you want to go. So a business plan is a written document, but it's a live written document. And what I mean by live is that it changes, right? It changes as our dreams change. It changes as the clientele that we serve. It changes sometimes in the locations that we're serving. And I'm, I know that a lot of times people will say, we have to make a vision, we have to make a mission, we have to, and yes, those things are important and they're all part of the business plan, but we have to have that roadmap. Businesses who write things down and have a roadmap tend to succeed far better than businesses that haphazardly put things together. So take a moment and think about where you want to go with your business. What do the things that you want to do? Where are the features, the services that you want to provide? And who do you want to provide them to? And then write out that business plan. Look at it all the time. Look at it to make changes. Look at it to plan three months, six months, a year down the line. But use it as a document to help guide you to help you move along your path. The second thing that I want to talk to you today about is having enough cash on hand. Cash is king. Cash will allow you to extend business. It'll allow you to add services. It'll allow you to pay yourself. It'll allow you to pay taxes and all those other kinds of things that we have to do. And the the problem is, is that we underestimate often how much cash do we need to have on hand. So for example, in my business, we have insurance, we have some private pay, but most of our business is it's dependent upon insurance. So we have to plan to have 60 to 90 days of cash flow so that we can meet our bills every month. Now in my practice, we have about 30 people that we employ, various people for various jobs. Um, but our, our payroll is close to $100,000 a year, a month. So the idea for me is I have to keep enough cash on hand. Now my payroll was not that when I first started. When I first started, we barely had maybe $3,000 in payroll per month. And we had to bootstrap things together, which I know many of you are already doing. But there needs to be a chunk of cash because COVID happened, because a flood happened, because in my part of the country anyway, there's forest fires and that will shut down your practice. If you don't have those cash reserves, it will then close your business because things happen that we cannot plan. Now we have been lucky in our business in that we've had enough cash on hand but there have been times that I had to pay my people and myself and my other business partner, we did not get paid. So in order to work on getting paid on a regular basis, which is part of why you have business, you want to make sure that you have enough cash reserve. 
And how you do that is you project on that business plan, what are your monthly costs? What are the things that are going to be standard? You're going to always have utilities. You're going to always have rent or, or mortgage if you're buying your building. So there's certain things that you're going to have all the time. I know my phone bill is going to be a certain amount. I know that utilities are going to run within this, you know, this range. Um, and so I know that I have to have this basic amount to cover my costs. So figure that out. Figure out what your basic cost is. In my business, I actually figured out per room. So I have 10 rooms. I have to have each of my therapists see three clients in order to pay for the rooms, the insurance, the taxes, everything each day to cover my costs. So you've got to figure out how many people you have working for you or what those minimum costs are and make sure that you have those in your bank. It'll just make your life so much easier. The last thing I want to talk to you about today is I want to talk about projecting your income. And when you project your income, I always take 10 or 15 percent off the top because I think that sometimes we have unreal expectations of what our business is going to do. And we think we're going to grow quicker or we think we're going to get those hundred new clients in. And maybe we will. But I think that we have to have realistic expectations. So what I had to, re I had to figure out and fi uh, work on were my insurance clients. How quickly will the insurance pay? Sometimes they pay quickly in 30 days. Sometimes they pay in 90 days. I have to take an average and kind of plan on that. And then I add another 10%. So those are the things that I worry about when we're going to pay people or when I have bills, a bills coming due is that are my expectations for when that money is coming in, are, is it realistic? Is it realistic that I'm going to get that money that we talked about or that I thought about we were going to get based on the number of clients that we have. The other thing I think sometimes is we think our business will grow without having to do a plan of how people are going to hear about us. We just know that we're going to do a really great job and people are going to hear about us. But as part of that expectation and planning our business, we really have to figure out who we're going to talk to, who's going to be our referral sources, and how are we going to keep them updated on what we're doing. So again, in my business, we send out a card twice a uh, year and just say, hey, just want to let you know we're running these groups. We are s providing these services. If there's anything we can do, please let us know. We'd love to work with you in conjunction with whatever it is that you're doing. And so each each uh, six months, we send something else out to our private practice uh, referral sources, including our doctors, our dentists, our local uh, people, even within our building. We talk to them about things that we're doing because we change. Things that change. Yes, we offer the same basic services, but some of the times we've offered just a little bit of a tweak in what those are. But we have to let those people know. And we have to be realistic in how many referrals that we're going to get in. So it's sometimes difficult to have the proper expectations that we need, but we have to change those. And that's why if we have that business plan that I keep harping about, um, we can go in and go, okay, these need to be switched. This needs to be checked. Here's the things that we can do for that. And then we can go along that plan. So I hope that that's helpful for you. Um, you can get free business plan outlines uh, from SCORE, and you can just start working on your plan and where your business is going to go. And if you need anything help on that, give me a call or I'll put my information down there. All right. Take care. Bye.